Hi, I'm Dr. John Koharchuk, Chief of the Division of Thoracic Surgery at Penn Medicine. On behalf of your physicians, nurses, and members of your care team, we thank you for entrusting your surgical care to us. The purpose of today's videos is to walk you through the surgical experience. We hope to eliminate some of the anxiety you and your family may be feeling. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to ask one of your team members. We would now like to take a few minutes to explain some key elements of your immediate postoperative period that may be unfamiliar to you. Since you just had surgery, you should be prepared to have some degree of pain. Our goal is to minimize that pain as much as we can, but in a safe manner. The surgical team works with the anesthesia pain team to approach pain using as many different options as possible and tailors the pain regimen to each individual patient. We will help to make sure you are using your incentive spirometer while you are awake. We will also help you to get out of bed, to the chair, and walk in the halls at least three times or as much as you can tolerate. Walking is important for your recovery and is a helpful way to reduce your risk for blood clots while you are in the hospital. You should also be aware that you may receive a blood thinning medication to help reduce the risk of blood clots during your stay. You will stay connected on the cardiac monitor so that we can watch your heart rate and rhythm and you may receive supplemental oxygen if needed. We ask that you use the call bell to notify your nurse or another nurse if you feel the need to get out of bed so that we can assist you while you are connected to the various devices. You will be seen by the thoracic surgery team to go over your plan of care while you are with us and we will make any adjustments needed to get you through your recovery period. Some people experience nausea and or vomiting after surgery as a result of the anesthesia or the narcotic pain medications they are receiving. The next morning after surgery, many patients can resume the diet that they were following prior to surgery. Nutrition is an important component of your healing process. Without adequate calories and protein, your body has a difficult time healing from surgery. While in the hospital, we recommend aiming to eat at least 50% of your meal tray, if not more. When appetite is poor, you can supplement with protein shakes such as Boost Plus. The goal is to maintain a stable weight so as to not lose muscle mass. It is also important to stay hydrated and drink plenty of water. As long as you are ensuring you are drinking enough water and not having any nausea, we can disconnect you from your IV fluids. Your bowels may be slow to work as a result of the narcotic pain medication, so you will be given stool softeners to help ensure your bowels will continue to work while you are taking narcotics. You will also be seen by the physical therapist. Prior to your session with physical therapy, your nurse will make sure that they assess your level of pain and provide you with options for pain management. During your session with physical therapy, he or she will show you various exercises to help you recover from surgery. The therapist will also evaluate your living situation and ability to get around after surgery in your own setting. If the therapist feels like you may need a little extra help, he or she will discuss this with you as well. When you are discharged from the hospital, you are able to walk around, use your steps at home, and take care of all of your usual activities. In addition to walking with you, the physical therapist will provide techniques that can help you with some of the shoulder soreness you may have in this post-operative period, as well as providing tips that allow for assisted deep breathing and coughing. A respiratory therapist will also come to your bedside to assess your breathing and review exercises that you can do to help improve your lung function post-operation. They will also teach you proper technique for using your incentive spirometer. They may also administer medications while you are in the hospital to improve your breathing. You may find that these treatments cause you to cough more, and we encourage you to do so, splinting with a pillow and coughing as much as you can tolerate. This will assist in strengthening your lungs and helping you to breathe easier. Sometimes you will cough up secretions that have blood in them. This is normal after lung surgery. It is true that your pain may not be taken away completely, but the goal is for you to be comfortable enough to cough, deep breathe, and walk around. Please be sure to communicate with your nurse, as well as the surgical team, if your pain is not being managed by the regimen you are on, because there are many other alternative ways we can work towards ensuring your pain is managed. A pharmacist is also available on the floor to review your home medications, as well as go over the hospital medications that you will be discharged with when you go home. You will meet a nurse case manager at some point during your stay. The case manager will discuss your home environment and find out who your support systems are at home. The case manager will also make arrangements for home care nurse to visit you. 
All thoracic surgery patients are offered a home care nurse visit. It is strongly encouraged that you accept the nurse visit so they can monitor and assess your incisional site after discharge. If physical therapy recommends home therapy for you, the case manager will arrange for their visit as well. Once the thoracic team has removed all of your surgical drains that are safe to be removed and your pain is well managed, we will begin to transition you to home. We will start planning for your discharge from the minute that you are admitted to the hospital and continue to communicate with you what needs to be completed in order for you to go home, as well as when you may be discharged. You should have already have identified a ride home before coming in for surgery, and you can communicate this information to the nursing staff upon your arrival. You will not be able to drive a vehicle for at least two weeks or until your follow-up appointment, but you can ride as a passenger. You can take a shower at least one day after the chest drain was removed from your chest. You should take down all dressings, unless specifically told not to, and wash all incisions with mild soap, such as Dove or Ivory soap, and just let the warm soapy water rinse over your incisions. You should not scrub these areas, but make sure to pat them dry well when you come out of the shower. Do not use any lotions or creams directly on your incisions. You should anticipate having some pain upon discharge from the hospital. You will leave with a prescription for different types of pain medications as well as stool softeners. If you have any paperwork that needs to be filled out by your employer, please have a family member bring it in or fax to your surgeon's office. If you should need some supplemental oxygen at discharge, the case manager will also order a portable tank for your discharge and have additional supplies delivered to your home. We will highlight any changes or new medications that are added, emphasizing side effects and how to take them so that you feel comfortable continuing this regimen at home. We will also reinforce activity restrictions. You may not lift anything heavier than 10 pounds, which equals to about a gallon of milk, after surgery or until seen by your surgeon at your follow-up visit. You should continue to use your incentive spirometer, continue walking and exercising your shoulder if it feels sore. You will also feel more fatigued than usual and have a decreased amount of stamina over the one to two weeks following your surgery. You'll likely also continue to drain from the area where the tube in your chest was removed. The fluid is usually a yellow pinkish color and will drain from the opening in your skin where your chest tube was removed. A dry gauze can be placed over this area. It is normal for fluid to drain when you change positions, such as when you go from sitting to standing, cough, try to move your bowels, or when you are walking. It can last up to a week after surgery or until this opening heals over. It is also important to properly take care of your incisions every day. Be familiar with what your incisions look like so that you are able to notice if you start to develop signs or symptoms of infection. If you notice increased redness, swelling, warmth, or drainage at your incision site, or develop a temperature higher than 101.5 degrees Fahrenheit, we ask that you call your surgeon's office immediately. Once you are discharged home, we suggest small, frequent meals spread throughout the day. Make sure your diet is high in protein, such as lean meats, eggs, and fish, as this is the most important nutrient for healing. You may also add in a daily multivitamin and continue to drink protein shakes or smoothies. If there are any significant weight changes, you should call your provider immediately to make them aware. We also advise that you stay hydrated to promote healing by drinking plenty of water. We ask that you call your surgeon's office on the day that you are discharged to schedule your follow-up visit for two to three weeks from the day of discharge. Prior to your follow-up appointment, you will have a chest x-ray and then will most likely not have to come back to the office for another six to 12 months following this appointment. You should also schedule an appointment with your primary care provider within two to three weeks of your hospital discharge in addition to the surgical follow-up appointment so that they are aware of your hospital stay. On behalf of the Division of Thoracic Surgery, thank you for watching this video series. Hopefully, you and your families have been able to learn more about your stay at the hospital and allay some of the questions, fears, and concerns you may have had. If you're approaching the post-operative period, don't forget to ask your provider about where and when your follow-up visit will be and what imaging studies you should bring with you. We will certainly make every attempt to get your follow-up appointments as close as home as possible. Thank you.